Hello one and all, welcome to the ATK Wrestling Show, where joining us today is an absolute legend, former WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Hornswoggle himself, Dylan Postel. Dylan, thank you so much for being here, man. How are you? Hi guys. Hello, 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 hello. Whenever someone says legend, it's always like, oh man, either that's <laughs> making me feel really old, which it does, or it's like, I don't know, I, uh, I don't view myself that way. And I, I think it's because I'm still going and I'm still like partially active. Where it's mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm I'm still going. I'm still at it, guys. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm not quite done yet. I ain't I ain't dead yet, as I always say. But it's uh <laughs> that it, it does mean a lot to me. It really, really does. And and lately, I've been getting better at absorbing um absorbing what I've done. I guess if that mm-hmm. makes yeah. sense, and absorbing like, hey, I've done some some pretty cool things, and it's okay cool to. Things to be proud of those because yeah, I, I always know. had the mindset of the minute you get too proud now you got an ego above you on you and i just i've i've never been one to I, I i'm so much so that i'd never been one to have one i would now like make it joking like oh i went from six <laughs> manias to this which is complete <laughs> like bullshit if we can't swear i'm sorry oh, but no, it's okay, okay. No, that'll yeah. go for it. uh <laughs> but it, it's 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 I couldn't, it couldn't be farther from how I feel. Like I just, I love, but I'm, I'm getting better at being okay with, with what I've done. <laughs> nah, I get you. Um, I mean, well, speaking of, of what you've done, things you're doing at the moment, I suppose, um, I sw- firstly, I just want to start off by sort of, I suppose, congratulating you on, uh, I believe you're approaching one year of, uh, of the going postal podcast. Um, yeah, it's, so, uh, uh, we're having fun, man. Me yeah. and George, I, George makes that shit happen. He he truly yeah. does. He makes the show happen. The, my co-host and producer. Um, we're having so much fun. We were with the Major Wrestling Picker podcast, like just on their Patreon. And then we're yeah. like, we're doing some really, really cool things. Uh, I want, we both kind of want even more people to hear what we were doing. And so we, we took a break from their Patreon. And now we're out on our own with no life jackets and I'm not a good swimmer. Thank God he is, <laughs> but, uh, man, we're having a lot of fun. Um, I yeah. literally just recorded an intro today for, for the Knick episode, which is our first episode of the year. And it's just fun, man. It's, it's something that I never thought I would do. I hate talking. Um, I hate, I just, <laughs> I always, I, I have the worst memory ever. People go all the time. Hey, remember when you did this? And you'll hear it on the podcast. George will bring up a thing and I'll blatantly go, that didn't happen. And it did. <laughs> it, it did. Not only did it, but it's like, it's, he has video of it or proof of it. And I go, I have no recollection of that. And it's, uh, <laughs> but I like it through the podcast. It's made me appreciate what I've, what I've done more and what I've kind of been a part of. Yeah, I was gonna say it must be nice, like obviously with with having the podcast and those conversations to sort of to to revisit those those memories and and like to be fair. Yeah, not only that, but like introducing as crazy as it is, int- between that and the YouTube channel with the looking up video diaries. I won't say vlog because I'm a 37 year old man. Uh, <laughs> um, introducing my son Landon to the world and like different people in my life like in my regular life like my dad and all that like and now people come up to me and oh how's Landon or how is he doing how what's he doing with this or what's this man he really got you with this it's just he uh when I bring him to shows and like especially local ACW Wisconsin shows people are all about him and like oh what's he up to how's football going like that kind of thing and it's through the podcast and through the the video diaries where it's another perspective. And I learned this from a good friend of mine, Ethan Page, where he was doing his vlogs at the time. And he goes, the reason I do this is so when my kids grow up, they realize why I wasn't home. So as much as I could have been. And I never thought about it. I was like, man, that's so awesome. And such like a cool thing. Landon is at the age. He knows why I'm not home on weekends Mm -hmm. or if I have to miss a football game or a basketball game, uh, he, he understands it. He's been around it legitimately his whole life, but to now bring him along for the ride on some things and to uh, include him on more, I mean, at thir- 
14, I call, he just had a birthday, at 14 years old, it's just one of those things where uh, it makes me feel good. And I, yeah, I love him yeah. around. He's the best kid ever. And I, I, we joke all the time. My friends joke with me all the time. They go, man, I don't know how such an awesome kid came from you. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I never really thought of it like that, but like the we're both fathers as well, and and yeah. you know having that sort of that diary that those memories that they can look back on is just that's that's an awesome idea to be fair. It, yeah, it, it really is, and it's a it's a I view it as the old I, I I the intro for my video diaries is a play on the old MTV Diary thing, and I loved yeah. the old MTV Diary in the '90s of like Ja Rule or J Lo or the Backstreet Boys. That was a cool thing for me as a kid yeah. seeing into their life. So that's what I wanted it to be like, but I want it to be a mix of what people would see on screen and, or in the ring and then behind the scenes and yeah. the trial, the, the, not everything is golden. Uh, we go through a lot and, and being um, the stature I am, uh, I, I, life on the road is different. And I wanted to really show that at times and show, I, I hate, the diff I hate when people say all oh, the difficulties. It's not difficult. It's just part of life. I can't mm -hmm. go through it and be like, man, this is really difficult. To no, I just got to deal with it. Because if I don't, I'm not going to travel. I'm not going to go, oh, man, I can't reach my bag up to the overhead, right? So I'm not going to fly. It's just ridiculous. So it's yeah. just it's part of life. It's what I've accepted. Having the back surgery and now for a year and a half, having no feeling in my legs is like, it's, 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 it sucks. I would be lying yeah. if I said I wish I could go back and like not deal with it, but also I took a chance on helping myself uh, and it didn't work the way we wanted, but I'm still above ground, man. I'm still able to get around and it's just a part of life. And that's what I yeah. really, really think about is like, I'm good. I have a, I, I can still sign my fake name. I can <laughs> still get in the ring. I can still play with my kid. I'm awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we saw um, obviously your son designed some some wrestling gear for you, um, which he got made, which we thought was really legitimately cool. was uh, that man, guys. I talk about on the podcast a lot the heartfelt Dylan moment of the week or the episode. That was what a way to end the year for me is like yeah. I had him design a vest, a jacket. He randomly texted me. I was he was by his mom's house and I was home and he goes, "Hey, Dad, can I design you a new vest?" I go, "I just got one, but sure." whatever <laughs> and like i don't think i said sure before his mom sent me a picture of him drawing one up and so i was like okay awesome i was like then i was like oh man what if i get it made without him knowing yeah. and i so i talked to my designer and the global wrestle wear knocked it out of the absolute park once again and not only that but they included the drawing his drawing in like as the tag and yeah, so when I showed it to awesome. him, he, yeah. he saw the, he saw the design exactly how he wanted. And then he saw his drawing and it was like, oh man, this is why I do this. And so now I've, I've determined unless it's a crazy idea I have or need, he is going to design every piece of my gear going forward. <laughs> Literally. I love that. Yeah. And it's kind of our connection. Like it'll be a really, really cool yeah. thing that he can, he can come up with the concept. And then I send it over to the wonderful TTD who works with the major wrestling figure podcast and all their gear designs and merch stuff. Um, and he's always designed, he'll, he'll always put the final touches and, but he's come up with all of my gear. So, and then it goes to global wrestle wear. So it's kind of like a, it'll be a three man process this time, which is great. And, and landing gets landing. I'm not a creative person guys. When it comes to that stuff, I am not creative. I literally just go TTD, make me something fun. And uh, he, he comes up with, banger ideas every time and i have literally two pieces of gear like singlet and pants that i can't wait to wear because he designed it and it's my it's my favorite gear yet so it's uh i'm, I'm, I'm pumped but yeah awesome. just good moments good dad moments yeah. absolutely yeah, um obviously you're uh you're coming over to the uk as well in march um at the for the Love wrestling convention um, i am so I'm happy <laughs> oh man i saw last year i was so bummed out when i saw the lineup and i was like Oh, I want to be part of this. So when I got reached out to for this year, man, it made me so happy. 
I can't wait. I, I didn't do the UK at all for a couple of years now. And so now mm-hmm. getting back over there, I cannot wait. I'm so excited to do be part of this convention and just to meet the fans over there. That's something like when I do, when I would go over for independent shows over there, it it's such a short amount of time where you don't get a lot of one-on-one time with fans. And that's yeah. what I'm very excited about, about this one is literally just taking as much time as the fans want and as I want. Sorry, guys, if the line is paused, <laughs> but I'm taking my time. Uh, I, I just, I'm excited to meet and greet. Yeah. And that's something I really enjoy. Uh, and, and it's just hearing, especially international fans, is their perspective on what they watched or how they watched or uh, what they took in because it's different, obviously. Um no. So I'm very, very excited. I am very excited to do the the convention over there and and just have some fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, um, obviously, you mentioned like being over in in the UK before, and I yeah. know um, you've you've actually done a few times with WWE on their UK tours. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any sort of particular memories or stories from from your times over here? I the, I mean, the one that sticks out the most is when we got stuck overseas. Uh, we were in Ireland. And we, when we got stuck uh, because yeah. of the volcano, I can't even remember the way year it was. Um, we got stuck because of the, the volcano in Greenland, I believe. And it was just, we didn't know when we were coming home. We literally had no idea when we were getting back. And it was one of those things where day to day, we'd wake up that morning and go down to the lobby. Are we going home today? Doesn't look like it. Okay. Are we going home that night? Doesn't look like it. And it was like, when it was decided that we were okay, we're going to try to go. It was like, you guys have an hour to pack, get your stuff up. We're going to take this bus. I remember it was like a flight, a ferry, a flight home. And it was such <laughs> a crazy day that we were, and we were, but we were all like, it was so such like a bonding trip because yeah. it was the first time ever. We were just like stuck together. One day we all went bo- golfing. And then another day we all went bowling and it was just like fun. <laughs> it was really, really cool. And just, a, it, it truly was like a bonding trip and, and just a good time. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Um, so obviously you were trained by a former guest of, of our show, Mr. Kennedy. Um, is it true yeah. that it was, it was important to you to kind of learn the cruiserweight style and not kind of the midget wrestling style? Um, and yeah, so, I feel kind of a full circle moment being the final cruiserweight champ. I never thought about that till you said it just now. Literally <laughs> never in my life have I thought about it until now. Uh, why? That's another thing that meant, probably meant something to me, um, winning the title. But yeah, I always wanted to, I hated midget wrestling. I hated the ref spots and the ass biting and everything that I currently do. <laughs> Which is, you talk about full circle, it's funny to think about now is that's what I hated. Uh, and now I, it's what I rely on because my body's beat up, but I love doing it. Um, it's just, it's, it wasn't my cup of tea. I wanted, I wasn't a fan of midget wrestling. I was a fan of Jeff Hardy and Rey Mysterio and the amazing red and Jack Evans. That's what I loved. Um, Hmm. so that's how I wanted to get trained. I wanted to get trained as a smaller, shorter cruiserweight, not as a midget wrestler. And it was really important to me. And I got trained that way. I never was, I never was, uh, like I never was taken aside when we were learning, you know, slams off the top or big suplexes or that kind of thing. I was never, I was always included and that. I'm so thankful for that. And that's something that when I run my school, uh, with the great, great coaches that I have along with me that I really make sure is everyone's going to try it once. And if they don't get it down, if it's just not for them. We'll make something else work, but everyone's going to try it. Indeed. Um, so obviously speaking of, um, of Ken, um, you were obviously you were revealed to be Vince's illegitimate son. Um, so I just wonder, is it true that that sort of Ken was originally lined up or hinted at, at being the illegitimate son? And um, if so, what, what was your reaction when you found out that you were going to be the big reveal? So I, I mean, that's, that's probably the most talked about thing that and DX <laughs> and then we all see as a real, real quick third. Um, <laughs> the Vince's son thing uh, was life changing. Um, absolutely yeah. life changing. It is, uh, it's probably the thing 
that I'm most proud of that happened. Uh, we LC is the best match I'll ever have in my life. I'll, I say it nonstop. Yeah. But the, uh, the Vince's son stuff was easily the highest point of my career. I, I yeah. was, I talk about it all the time. The 15th anniversary of raw. I was on five segments that whole show that were just about me. And it's just crazy to think about. I was the opening segment and I was the closing thing you saw of me pouring beer on Vince. And it's just, it's mind blowing. Um, I still think it was supposed to be Ken. Uh, yeah, that's just what I think. And a lot of people do. Um, Ken finally came out lately and admitted that he thought that it was supposed to be him too. Um, but it, uh, I'm glad it was me. <laughs> I'm really glad it was <laughs> me. <laughs> uh, but man, it, it really, really was awesome. Um, it really was a, a cool thing. And it's something that yeah. I'll, that I'll never, like, I, I can never like think of, of, man, I, what would I have done if it wasn't that? I would, yeah. I mean, who knows? Who knows if I would have had the longevity I would have had. Who knows of, of any of that. And it's just, it's a really, really cool thing that I can look back on as a, you know, as a 21-year-old a kid, literally a, a child still at that point in my life, and just go, this is, this is the coolest moment ever. I found out at 3 o'clock that afternoon. <laughs> it was in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, so I, I literally got to call. I talk about it in my book, Life is Short and So Am I. Mm -hmm. Uh, I got, I, I asked Bruce Pritchard after he told me, I said, Hey, can I make one call and make sure that they're here tonight? And I called my dad and my grandpa and I said, Hey, all I can say is please be here. And my, they, cause I wasn't booked otherwise. So they weren't gonna, they weren't gonna come and they got them tickets and it was a, it was a really, really special night with my family and, and other friends there to, uh, for that to happen. And I, I never you know, I knew it was going to be big. I never yeah. knew how big it was going to be and how big for me. Um, it, it was just, it was astronomical. Yeah. I think as well, like you mentioned, obviously being able to fly your, your dad and, and your grandfather over as, as well for it was, was amazing. I think, is have you got like a bucket list kind of item that you'd really want your son to be in attendance for as well? Like, is, is there anything left in your career that you really you know, kind of want Landon to be there for? I mean, Landon wants to go to the UK. And I said, absolutely not. I said, no. <laughs> so you have school, pal. I said, <laughs> it was a summer thing. Let's go. Um, I would like to bring, my, to be honest, I would like to bring my dad uh, over to the UK for, uh, if I if I do some shows. UK promoters, Rev Pro, all of that. Bring Dylan back. I want to do more UK stuff. Um, but I really want to do some more UK stuff. Eh. I finally started seeing the light at the end. It's very far still. I still believe it's very far, but I, I finally have seen it. And there's, I still need to do Japan. Uh, Japan is literally my last thing I need to do in my yeah. life. Um, and then I can be done there and Hawaii. Hawaii is the only state I've never wrestled down in. So that's, that's it. And then I'm done. Um, but as far as Lana being there, um, I don't know. Like I, it's not something I think about. Uh, whenever there's something like really cool, I go and it works out for his school schedule or whatnot. It's, uh, I like to have him along. Um, he always comes to the drivable ones, but it's just, it's stuff like that. We had a, I had a show for Brian Myers is creative pro wrestling, uh, out in New York and Landon's always wanted to go to New York city and just see it. And so it worked out. It was during the summer and we made a four day trip out of it. It was just a blast. It was, it was cool to be able to do work stuff and then just a, a quick vacation and, and show them New York city. So it's stuff like that that I really, really enjoy. Um, I was just talking to him last week. I said, man, if, if I ever do some LA shows, I would love to take some days out there and just do the Hollywood thing. And we we're both Disney fanatics. We go, we still go every year. It's our, it's our literally our yearly trip every May. And I would love to do the Disneyland out there with him and just, take in the sights out there because again, if I'm being honest with myself, who knows how long this is going to last? Who knows? I'm, I, I, I pinch myself every day that I'm able, like I say, I'm able to sign my fake name on things 
And uh, now, I mean, I've been out of WWE for just under 10 years. And so it's like, it's mind blowing how the longevity of wrestling memories is, is crazy. Yeah, that's, that's making me feel old now. To it's been ten years. <laughs> you, <laughs> you too quick. What, man, when when people go, you were my childhood. I grew up on you. I go, oh, fuck. Here we go. <laughs> um, so obviously, uh, we mentioned earlier about uh, Landon uh, designing your your wrestling gear. Um, yeah. So I just sort of wanted on the back of that, just to, to ask, you know, uh, uh, has he sort of shown any interest in being involved in in the business in some capacity? Sadly, yeah. In the yeah, yeah. It's scary as it is. <laughs> he goes to our school once or twice a week and just does stuff. It's what he it's what he loves. He's been around it his whole life. And so for him to do that, it's like it's kind of mind blowing and kind of like, all right, what do we do? What do we do? Where, where mm-hmm. I always said I'm not going to our rule at the school is 17. You ain't starting until you're 17. And I'm not going to break that rule for him. <laughs> I'm also going to push him to try. Uh, I mean, he's, you know, we just had his registration for high school last night. That in itself is mind blowing to me because it's like, oh God, he's just a baby still. But to think he's going already going into high school next year, it's, it's crazy. Um, but it's stuff like that where it's, I, I am not going to favor him by any means. I want him to try college and give it a shot. College isn't for everyone. It was not for me. Uh, but he needs to also know the small percentage of wrestling that works out at a career level, that percentage is so small that there's got to be a number one plan. I truly feel. Yeah. Um, take it as a hobby first and then luck out. That's how I, that's how I feel. That's how, that's what I tell my <laughs> students. Guys, this should be a hobby. This should be an interest. Um, and if it works out, it works out. But it, it's, yeah. it's not something... I don't know. It's it's hard for me to it's hard for me to tell people, hey, put this before anything in life. Yeah, sound advice. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> as you say, it's such a small percentage actually make it. Um, so before before we got to know you as Hornswoggle, you were introduced as Lil Bastard, which in hindsight is, is kind of ludicrous. Um, what were wonder why that didn't told? work out, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what were your thoughts when you found out that like that's how you're going to be brought in? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I was whatever call me whatever as long as the paycheck comes and i'm on television <laughs> i don't give a shit um, <laughs> but so it's kind of funny now that the now that you know through the my my uh relationship with the major wrestling figure podcast and all that it's it's a big thing to try to find there's this lamin card that is uh i believe from spain or from uk i always forget but it is the only trading card or the only like main piece of merchandise with little bastard on it. There's that there's a program and there's an eight by 10 photo file, like an eight by 10 P series. But those are the only things with little bastard on it. And I have, I've got, and I'm, so whenever I find them, I get them graded. I have one in my case right back there. Uh, Brian Myers has one. Finally, he finally got one, which I was like, man, I just want to make it my goal for him never to get one. And he got one. Um, but there's, there's only a few out there and it's, it's, it's to think about I, what I heard was they're like, they're pitching me to have the, the figure at Toys R Us. And then they're like, oh, we can't put that on a toy, obviously. Um, so that's when the name came, the name change happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> makes sense. Um, so, you spent a lot of your initial run under the ring. Now, I'm hoping you can you can sort of answer something I've always been curious about with, with this sort of thing. Like, how do you manage to get under there without the fans seeing? Like, are you are you there? Are you under there before the show even begins, or like, did, did he sneak you under there? Like, how does that so work? So it was uh there was a there was a multiple different ways we would do it. Um, if the lights didn't go off in the building enough, like then we would have to do it before the show. There was a time I, there was, there was overseas ones like in these bull rings down in South America where obviously it was like outdoors and the lights, you couldn't control the lighting. Obviously I was under the ring for seven hours at one point, just hanging out (laughs) and just doing my thing. Uh, But then there were times where I would get snuck out right before the match. And a lot of the times on the house shows and the live events, uh, 
they would drop all the lights and put a video on the screen. And then we would have a bunch of stage hands around me and, and I would be in full black, uh, you know, black hoodie yeah. and black pants and just sneak out um, or a curtain, like a drape over me uh, and that kind of thing where there'd be enough stage hands coming out. Like they were going to fix something in the ring. We would do it after a while. We, were, we would have fun and put me like in a ring cart and push it down like <laughs> now Taylor Swift is doing and and I would they turn it on its side I would get out um there was a bunch of t- bunch of different things but that was the main yeah. uh the greatest royal rumble no the the other royal rumble the second one where I did the a thing in the women's royal rumble mm. um it was a baseball f- stadium so that was like man how are we going to do this this is going to be interesting so I was on a golf cart and I remember having a uh, a, a bat- black pants and black hoodie and a drape all over me and they they drove it literally all the way to ringside between segments and then i just sh- shot under they turned off the lights <laughs> in the stadium i shot under but it was crazy like it was it was it's it, there was times where like me and undertaker would both get snuck under at the same time or me and boogeyman or that kind of thing where it would be the same same kind of thing you'd have those three or four fans at the rail that would notice it but nine times out of ten everyone you know the other 20,000 are watching the video or just like, Oh, those are just people repairing the ring. Yeah. Yeah. I love, um, you mentioned like some of the ribs you used to pull on a uh, Tony Chimmel and, and, and things like that. Did anyone ever Man, play any kind of ribs on you? Put anything on I the had, ring while you were stuck under the... I had him on, on my, on my show, on, on the, on a, you know, small talk. It's still one of the most talked about interviews I've done because people Chimmel hasn't done anything interview wise. So people got to really know him and got to see his personality and all that. I'm so happy to have him on. And then like thinking back on the stuff I would do, the worms, man, I would boogeyman would have the worms and he would be the match before ours. And so the worms would be under the ring and I would just throw these worms from under the ring at Chimmel or I would tie his, like I would, he would be mid uh, announcement and I would be pulling the mic cord away from him. It was just fun stuff, man. I would, it would, he has always been such a, a close friend of mine and I absolutely love the relationship and I'm so grateful of the relationship he and I have. Cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so obviously you, you briefly mentioned um, Undertaker as well. He's a, a, another sorry, a frequenter under the ring, I guess. Um, and I know you've mentioned this before, but I just wanted to ask about, the, you've mentioned a few times how you'd fallen asleep under the ring. Uh, yeah. And one time in particular, almost missed a spot with the Undertaker. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to sort of ask about uh, it was that was <laughs> that was overseas. I forget where we were. It might have been the UK, uh, but I, yeah. I, I can't think for the life of me where it was now. But it was a six man tag. It was the main event. It was about halfway through the tour. So I the night before I was a tad uh, sleepy, some may say. Uh, <laughs> and and it was I remember the match. It was. Kane, Undertaker, and Batista against Finley, Big Daddy V, and Kali. So there's a lot of meat in the ring. Uh, and a lot, I mean, very noisy, obviously. Um, yeah. But I just, it was time for my spot, and I was sleeping. I was sleeping under the <laughs> ring. And Finley goes out to the out of the ring, because the spot always was, the whole tour. Finley would hit Undertaker, Bam! He would roll out. He would get me. He would throw me in as I was going to I was I'd hike up my sleeves. I'm going to get Undertaker, and he would sit up, and we'd meet face to face. All right, here we go. Finley goes to the outside, lifts up the curtain. I'm not there. I'm still not there. I'm still not there. And now all he sees is me face down. He thought one of the ring parts hit me, and I was knocked out. So he whacks me on the back of the head with his hand, and I go, oh, hey, man. Oh, no. And I, now I'm just shaking. And now I realize, oh, I still have to go. I go out, he throws me in. And I remember to this day, just going, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to the undertaker as he's like laying down. And I, he sits up, we do the spot. I get to the back and fit goes, what were you doing? I said, I was sleeping. I, I'm, I, he goes, you what? I said, I was dead asleep. He goes, I was done. And he goes, I thought you were dead, dead. I thought you got knocked out. He goes, Oh man, I can't wait to see this interaction because then Undertaker is coming back. And he goes, "What happened, kid?" I go, "I was sleeping." He goes, "You what?" I said, "I was sleeping." And he looks at me. He looks at Finley. He goes, "God dang it!" And he he walks off. And I go, "I gotta make this up to him, don't I?" Finley goes, 
probably should. So I remember having one of the showrunners get a giant bottle of Jack Daniels that night for the bus ride to the next show. Uh, but it was, man, it was one of those things where he goes, you seriously were sleeping? I said, yep, the whole show. He goes, how? I said, I don't know. But that's just, I, I, I was so comfortable under the ring. It was, it was literally as cliche as it is. It was a second home for me. And now it's like, to think about that, how, how I could easily do that so easily. It's mind blowing. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned Finley. Obviously, you spent a lot of your, your career in WWE beside Finley. Do you think we end up seeing him in the Hall of Fame one day? And also, I know you mentioned at the start, you don't like to think about it for yourself but considering the impact that you've had on the business I'll never yourself. Think, I'll if, never think about it. I'll never talk if about you it. Do, <laughs> well, nope. if you do, which you deservedly should, get the call one day, would you choose Finley as the one to induct yourself? Um, it would either be him or Kofi. Uh, uh, yeah, it would be him or Kofi. Um, yeah. It would make the most sense for Finley probably, but Kofi, man, he's him and Hawkins wrote the forwards to my book. And it's uh, going back to your Finley thing. Yes. Finley undeniable, undoubtedly deserves to be in the hall of fame. The, the role he's had on screen is, is, is uh, nothing compared to the role off screen. He's had such a career on screen, but his role off screen has been astronomical and it's been so huge. Um, I, I truly feel there wouldn't be a women's division without him. Uh, and it's, a, he's just, he's absolutely incredible. He really, really is. Uh, but then going to the, the Kofi and Hawkins writing the forward in my book. So that was the one thing I wanted with the forward was I, I didn't want to see it. All I said to the, to the, the publishing companies, I said, I do not want to see it. If you sh send me any drafts of the book to look over and the forward is there, I'm deleting the email. You're going to have to resend it because I didn't want to see it. Book comes out. I get the very first copy ever seen in hand. I go and I start reading it. And it's the same day I have a book signing that exact same day. So I'm getting it the exact same day. Open it up and I start reading the forwards. Hawkins's is so heartfelt and nice and puts me over and just our friendship and all that. Then Kofi's is literally like a comedy central roast of me <laughs> where I was like, I was crying from Hawkins's and I'm still crying because of Kofi's and now I'm laughing and hysterically cry. It's, it was such a, a 180 degree between the two, but then he puts me over at the end of it and man, so I texted them too. I said, thanks, dicks. I'm now crying and laughing very, very hard. <laughs> Hawkins goes, it was so hard for me because I didn't, he goes, I wrote mine and then I read Kofi's and it's a roast. He goes, otherwise I would have roasted you too. I go, oh, thanks guys. Like it, it, was, it was such a, I'm very, very glad that I didn't see it until then. That It, it, it meant even more yeah. to me. And just for them too, to do it for me it meant a lot. Yeah. No, I really like that approach of, like, like you say, not reading it until it's actually published. I think that's yeah. a really cool idea. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, you mentioned a little bit earlier that um, you have certain questions that you get asked frequently. So, apologies, because I, I will... Uh, don't, no, no, don't. Hey, <laughs> I, um, I don't mind talking about it. I just... How I... How I... How I... Uh... How I do small talk and stuff on, on the YouTube channel and on the Going Postal podcast, I always, like... Because my mindset... I always thought I talk about it uh, here and there is when I was doing the stuff with Vince um, as his yeah. son and people ask all the time, well, did you get to talk to him? Did you pick his brain? I said, no, but I always thought like, Hey, whose idea was it for the moving rings and like random shit like that? Like, Hey, <laughs> what really happened with nails? Give me the scoop. Like, like, <laughs> like stuff, like stuff. <laughs> so weird. That's how my brain works. It's not how everyone's brain works. But yeah. I know how my brain works is the randomness and like, I really want to know about WrestleMania nine because it's the shits of a WrestleMania. But as a kid, it was my favorite because it looked different. It was presented different and it was just growing up. It was my favorite WrestleMania besides six because of ultimate warrior. But that's another thing. Hey, Vince, <laughs> who told you about the wrestling buddies? And he would probably go, God damn it. What are those? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but the wrestling buddies were my childhood. Wrestling figures were my childhood. I want to know about random stuff. And so for that, that's that's kind of how I run my interviews where I still hit the big things. But it's 
but I fully understand that that's not how many people's brain works. And I completely get that. So talking about the normal stuff, I love talking about the normal stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, but it's, it's just like, I, 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 I also like, it's just, yeah, it's just not how my brain works. So go ahead. I'm sorry for interrupting. No, I get that. No, 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 that's fine. I actually, um, I love that approach because like, it just keeps it a bit more interesting. And, and we obviously we always try and sort of make sure that we're not asking too many things that you, you probably get asked on, on every show, but there, there are certain things that we're like, oh, we, we can't have ask. To. And, and you this, this is one of them and it'll be a hundred percent. You got to ask about Vince's son. You got to ask about <laughs> DX. You got to ask about WLC, about yeah. the cruise. And you then, have to. to that's... Fair, DX is exactly where I'm going to go now. <laughs> <laughs> So the question was quite simply, you know, um, sort of how was it working with, with Triple H and Sean and, and being part of, of obviously such a, a, a big faction, like so one of the most popular factions of all time, to be fair. Yeah, to be approached by, I mean, I got approached randomly at a Raw and I was like, hey, you're going to be part of us. And I go, no, I'm not. What do you mean? Because, yep, you're going to be part of us. We're going to work to that. And I go. Okay, here we, again, here we go. I live by that. I live <laughs> by the statement of here we go because that's truly how my life works and that's how I like my life of I like being surprised by something and not thinking into something like not yeah. You know, it's a very if I went to any therapist, they'd say this is a horrible mindset to have, but I don't like getting excited about things until it's happening because you can only be let down rather than you could be excited if you don't think it's going to happen. Horrible mindset to have, horrible way to live, I'm sure, very unhealthy. That's how I live and that's I'm 37 and I'm okay. Um but it's uh it's uh, that whole thing was my immediate thing was I'm going to be fucking X-Pac. I'm X-Pac. This nice. is me. <laughs> and I was like X-Pac was one of my favorite wrestlers. This is yeah. why it's so cool to me. I get to throw glow sticks. And then as I was throwing glow sticks going, oh, there's someone not paying attention on their cell phone while their kid is loving life. I'm going to try to hit that parent <laughs> seven rows up. And I would just, I would target these parents on their phones. Their kids are having a blast. And I would target these parents way high up. And I could just whip these things. <laughs> and I felt like I was on cloud nine. I would ask them, brilliant. Triple H and shot us. They go, oh, you want glow sticks? I'll take all of them. You guys don't need to throw them. I'll take all of them. <laughs> Just to have extra <laughs> ammo. I loved whipping the glow sticks. Whipping the glow sticks and being X-Pac for the pyro was the coolest part of DX. Easily. Easily the coolest part. The fact That's that awesome. I have in uh, framed is a picture of me, Triple H, and Shawn Michaels doing DX pyro is crazy to me. Yeah. It's crazy to me. And it's something that will never be taken from me. Um and it's just a, it's a really, really neat thing that I can, I can, uh, another feather in my cap, I guess they say, if they say that might be apostolism, uh, no, it's true. but it's just, it's <laughs> a, it's a really, really neat thing to be able to, to be part of that. Absolutely. We yeah. absolutely loved, um, I mean, we loved everything you do, but yeah, the DX stuff was just brilliant. Yeah. Um, is it true that we almost got to see you back in WWE in 2020, um, at Backlash? So was you going to have some involvement with the Viking Raiders and the Street yes. Fighter match? And so, yeah. Happened? Did I just talk about this? Did I talk about it on the podcast? I um, I feel like I either know. talked about it or some interview. I, yes, which is a crazy thing. So I got flown down. Backlash 2020. I got flown down. And they were doing like some all over brawl with the Viking Raiders and the Street Profits. And we were filming it. And my all, all of our stuff was supposed to be filmed like outside or right in. It was at the Performance Center. And it was in like the intro area. But it was raining and thunderstorming so hard. It was like flash flooding. And we couldn't shoot anything because of the thunder noise and because of how much it was raining. So they had to stop the shoot. We like waited and waited and waited. And there we just couldn't do it. It was actually the same day they were filming Edge and Randy Orton's uh, greatest match of all time. So it was a crazy day of shooting. Yeah. But it would have been, I would have been, I believe, and I could be wrong. But at that point, I would have been the only performer to be on AEW, WWE, Ring of Honor, and Impact in the same year. And it would have it was wow. like, man, <laughs> it didn't happen. Damn it. But it was uh I'm very grateful for them to still give me the call on that and think of me for stat stuff like that. I mean, and then the greatest Royal Rumble and then the women's Royal Rumble and and just stuff like that. When I when I got released, 
my dad, who is uh, my absolute hero, who is just a guy that I live my life uh, to be like. Um, he, he, he's, he's just the greatest human I know, literally the greatest human I know. He said to me, he goes, Dylan, don't burn bridges. He goes, because it's not worth it. He goes, you need to realize if you don't, they gave you 10 years of an awesome dream life. And it's something that really stuck with me. And and I, I really think to this day, like why burn a bridge? Why, why, why talk poorly? When all I have, in all reality, I have them to thank for everything I do today. Everything in my office, everything that I still get to do today, again, signing my fake name is because they gave that to me. And I am so, I'm very grateful for everything they gave me and every opportunity they gave me. Um, Was there highs and lows? There sure were. But even with the lows, my dad would go, "They're, they're still paying you to be on television, Dylan. They're still paying you very, very well to live your dream. Even if you're sitting home, you're able to provide for your family. You're able to raise your son. It's, it's stuff like that that really hits me. And it's like, yeah, I have no reason. In all reality, I have no reason to be upset by anything. They gave me my dream life. All I wanted to do since I was four years old was be a professional wrestler and be on WWE. And they gave me that. And so I can't, there's no, there's no way I should be able to burn any bridge or even think yeah. about doing that. Because what would I have without that? Yeah. That's a great really way to awesome mindset. Yeah. yeah. Like that. I mean, you can tell just from speak, speaking to you, sort of how positive your mindset is anyway. But I think that that perspective from your father is just that, that's the best way to be with it. He's it really is. Man, him, I, I, from um, financial stuff, from work stuff, from traveling, from stuff around my guys. I, if I could say, if I told you I can't change a light bulb without asking him, it's, it's very true. I can't. I ain't the least bit handy, man. I call him for everything. He's now in Florida for the next couple months. And I like pray every day that something doesn't go wrong in my house. Cause I have no <laughs> idea what I'm doing. I have absolutely no re- idea. And then I live in such a small town that when he's home, I call him and, I, and he's like two minutes away. It's awesome. But, uh, yeah. it's, it's, I live my life, uh, through him and, and, and he, he's the best. And with Landon, their relationship is so awesome too. So it's one of those things where it's, uh, I'm I'm very very thankful for that relationship, and I think about it every day. Of, hey, what if I'm if I'm negative on something? Is is there is there another way to look at this? Because there yeah. probably is, and there's probably still a way to be positive about it. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, definitely an awesome perspective. Um, so obviously you mentioned uh, briefly then about um, obviously the different shows you work for. Uh, one of yeah. them you mentioned was Impact. So um, obviously. We recently saw you. I say recently, uh, probably not as recent yeah, as twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah. Twenty twenty. Um, sorry, um, that obviously you appeared as as AJ Swoggle. Um, so I just wondered, sort of, firstly, how that came about, and and you know, did you did you speak to AJ either before or after, and and uh, you know, what was his reaction? I truly feel this came out of. So I did uh, like a, currently also I'm still doing like I just started. I'm on number eight. But I'm doing like evening with slash stand up and nights, evening like story nights, uh, shows. I've been doing a few of those and I awesome. really, really love doing them. Um, I yeah. want to do more of them this year. I want to do a ton. That's my, that's my, my goal is conventions and more of the evening with shows. So I'm really starting to have a lot of fun with them, but yeah. I did one at a star cast. It was at a star cast or it was the, yes, yeah, so it would have been star cast. And I did one, I was part of it and a picture got out there of me on stage and like it was like a side by side of me and AJ and me and it was like me and AJ because of the long hair and the goatee at the time and I remember like Orton retweeted it or something or or put some tweet out there about it and I fully think it was Scott Demore laughing at it and going let's do it sure and that's all it was (laughs) it was like okay and so we it just randomly happened and that's all it was I never talked to AJ about it nothing um still to this day uh but it's it was it was a fun moment that people still talk about which is uh all i ask i got a micro brawler out of it and it's (laughs) awesome absolutely was it um (laughs) like for yourself was it difficult trying to get the sort of the aj mannerisms down like with the hands and and the like no because he's he's i literally watched it once and i go okay here we go (laughs) i remember my the, the gloves were from my son my son had the gloves and i was like 
and he had like the wristbands and all that. And that's so we just did it. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. We also popped as well for um your, your stint in AW when they did the uh, inner circle go to Vegas. How did that kind of whose <laughs> idea was that to bring you? Again, that? that was just a last like they called me and said, Hey, we have a Jericho uh texted me, say, Hey, we have this idea. Someone from creative is gonna call you. Okay. And they go, You're gonna be the hangover baby. I go, the what? <laughs> I go, the hang the baby from the hangover essentially. I said, Great, tell me when and where to show up. And I was I literally flew to Vegas. We shot the thing. I flew home that night. It was the quickest Vegas trip ever, thankfully. Uh <laughs> be, but it was it was awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Um so you've spoken about uh, about Wee Man uh, being somewhat of an inspiration. Um yeah. and you actually got to to interview him as well. Um I think around when Jackass were involved in WrestleMania. Um, so just wondering, was there ever any discussion about sort of bringing you in around that time, and and you know, uh, would you would you have been interested in, in sort of working with Wee Man one day? <laughs> Hell yes! Hell yeah. yeah! I get asked that. Oh, would you go back, guys? If I would say no, I would be the dumbest human. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, yeah, there was no talk. I I was as surprised as everyone was that mania, and it was great. It was I. I loved it, man. I've, I'm a jackass fanatic. It's some wee man. Legitimately, was a hero of mine growing up, um, just from the star power he had as a dwarf. And so it was really, really cool to see that uh, there was a pitch. I talked about it in the book actually. Um, SummerSlam, I believe it would have been 07, 06 or 07. I forget. Must have been 07. But there was a pitch because Jackass was gonna like invade SummerSlam that year. So it was going to be a big six man tag or big like six or eight man tag. There was going to be the, a bunch of stuff with the Jackass guys and SummerSlam. Uh, and so I pitched, I heard about this and I was like, oh man, here's my in. And I remember going to Vince and pitching a boxing match with me and Wee Man. And the next week I saw it on the potential pay-per-view lineup because every TV script had the end page was like, here's what we're working towards at the next pay-per-view. And Wee Man versus Hornswoggle boxing match was on there. And I was like, holy shit, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. And then they weren't part of it anymore, and it didn't happen. It was like, oh, man, that would have been so awesome for me. It would have been such yeah. a cool moment, especially on SummerSlam of all shows. Um, but, yeah, he's seeing his involvement. Man, that Johnny Knoxville, Sami Zayn match, that WrestleMania with Bad Bunny, Pat McAfee, and Knoxville, easily was the best celebrity performances in WWE history by far. Yeah. All three of them knocked it out of the park. Uh, it just it's, it's crazy. Uh, now Logan Paul, uh, it's, it's just, it's insane how good they all are doing. Yeah, yeah no, I couldn't absolutely. agree more. Yeah. And, um, you know, talking about people from of other fields, um, you, obviously yourself, you're an actor. You've been in obviously the likes of Leprechaun Origins and Muppets Most Wanted. What are those experiences being like? And are you looking to do any more kind of um, acting? Hell yeah. Show? Yeah. Roll me. Put me in a role. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I really, I love it. I really, really did enjoy both of those. I really enjoyed yeah. both of those. And I really enjoyed um, just doing something different. I'm, I mean, I've been a Muppet fanatic my whole life. So to be able to, to, to be a part of that and to now consider like the Muppet performers, friends of mine, I had Bill Beretta on the show and uh, interviewing him, finding out he was like him and his brother did backyard wrestling and videotaped themselves wrestling in their inner, in their living room and like showing the clips on my show was incredible. Um, so to be able to do that, that role was so awesome. And so something I'm, uh, that's so special to me. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so while we're talking about the sort of the film industry, um, yeah. obviously somewhat of a controversial figure at times, and uh, Piers Morgan has been talking about the likes of uh, the new Snow White. And, <laughs> I, would, I had a feeling this was going to come up like, after that yeah. one. <laughs> um, <laughs> so obviously, the, this this so that suggestion that it's you know it's 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 become far, it, harder to or more difficult to to sort of find roles now. Um, do do you think that Hollywood should be sort of doing more to protect those kind of roles? Or hell yeah, they should. I just came out about it again uh, yeah. when. Uh, Hugh Grant is in Wonka now as an Oompa yeah. Loompa. It's like I keep saying, and and fuck Peter Dinklage, fuck Peter Dinklage, <laughs> man. God damn, 
he just ruined everything legitimately and by one statement he made about you know why is he on his soapbox preaching that they should be taken seriously every role that he's ever want that like every little person role he took that he that he wanted yeah. that that was approached you know for him um it's it, it's it's horrible the snow white hmm. thing how they changed it to normal size actors because of what he said was absolutely ridiculous. And now Hugh Grant having the role as the Oompa Loompa in Wonka is just so silly to me. And it's so crazy. Why are we doing this? Who, who in the community is offended? I'm not. And am I the voice of the community? No, I'm not the voice, but well, then why is Peter Dinklage the voice of the community? There should be many voices of any community. That's my whole thing. Why is it okay for one voice to speak up and be the voice to cancel everything for a culture, whether it's for little people or any culture? Why is that okay? And, you know, I go on these shows here and there, and it's it's not seen, it's not watched and viewed as to what I'm saying and what I've said on these shows. It's viewed as, oh, you were on that show you have to be agreeing with everything he says that, no, that's not what this is about to me. It's about speaking up for myself, yep. for my community, and and just giving a voice uh, um, that's opposite of what might be out there. That's all it is. And yep. I just think it's absolutely ridiculous that because of what Peter Dinklage said, halted a whole production of you know from Disney about seven plus roles that could have went to little people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're totally right. As you say, one one person sort of speaking for an entire community rather than it being a, a discussion, it just it doesn't make sense. One red flag is waved and it stops everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then yeah. why? But but the, and then what is that teaching like uh, everyone? It's like oh, so you have a problem. You shouldn't take anyone else's perspective into it. That's my yeah. thing. Yeah. Um. So obviously you wear many hats. You're a wrestler, an actor, an author, and a stand-up comedian that you host the evenings with. How do they kind of differ and kind of what's the best and worst kind of parts of, of everything that you do? I, guys, I'm having so much. I, it's, again, a lot of cliche things. I'm having so much fun in life right now, like in general, doing the podcast thing, doing wrestling, you know, signings, you know, stand-up stuff, being a dad, just real life running my company in ACW Wisconsin and our training school. It's just, I'm having fun. I, I am very worked, but also during the week and during the daytime, I am very not worked and that's okay. Uh, I, I, I love my weekdays because it's, it's like people always say you earn your weekends. For me, it's like opposite. I work the weekends to earn the weekdays as, as, as silly as that is. But I love it. I'm I'm very very happy, and again, I'm just so lucky to be able to to do what I do, um, and I'm I'm very grateful to be able to do what I do each and every day. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. <clears throat> um, so I think I mean certainly. Lastly, from us, really, it'd be um, sort of what does 2024 look like for you, and um, you know. Uh, well, I suppose potentially. I don't know. Matches in the way. I have no idea. I have, I have, I have no idea what I'm doing tomorrow. I, I, I know tonight I am gonna make dinner at some point. I don't know <laughs> what I'm doing tomorrow or the weekend. Like, um, okay. <laughs> I'm a very what are you much for a, dinner. <laughs> uh, tonight is going to be chicken lettuce wraps. Even though my son doesn't know that, he is going. To, he he might enjoy it. He's he's a very good at trying things and then going blatantly like wasn't the best wasn't the best thing that we could have done. <laughs> and I go okay we'll go to one of the standbys uh but it's one of those things where I I hope this year is even better than last does that mean it's going to be busier than last possibly not doesn't I just want it to be better than last and that's kind of how my mindset is um being busy doesn't always mean good uh it, mm. it usually does in, in our our line of work but I love, I love everything I'm doing, guys. I, my ACW Wisconsin, my company has our huge Water City Wrestling Con event uh, in May in Oshkosh, was a big old Oshkosh, Wisconsin. It's our yearly huge event. Um, we just announced uh, Nick Nemeth, formerly Dolph Ziggler, 
and we only announced him and our uh, people are so excited and we have more guests coming for that acwwisconsin.com for that uh i'm excited to build the podcast the going postal brand i i wrote it i don't make a a dream board i make a mental one of things i really want to do this year i want to do more stand up this year i would love to do more acting I want to do more conventions and I want to build this podcast brand. Um, I'm having so much fun doing it. I want more people to know about it. Uh, between the going postal stuff where we do talk about, you know, Hey, what was the cruiserweight title win like, or what was uh WLC like, um, or the small talk episodes where I, I interview everyone from Kofi Kingston, Renee Paquette, Brian Myers, Ethan page, to people in the major pot of the world like Joe Shoes and Mike Kinnick, where it's stuff like that, where it's, I just want people to know about the brand, the Going Postal brand. Because um, I'm very, very happy and I'm very proud yeah. of it and proud of what we're doing and, and we're having fun. Uh, it's just, I just, I, I want to keep working. I love, I love working. I love traveling. I love going to shows. I always say from Madison Square Garden to Horse Cave, Kentucky. I love going to them. And I think that's another reason I'm so excited to do it for, for the love of wrestling convention. It's, it's just, I get to see a fan base that I, I don't get to see very much at all, if at all. And I'm excited to spend a couple of days out there. Awesome. Yeah. Well, honestly, Dylan, thank you so much. It's been an Thanks, absolute guys. pleasure um, and honor to have you on the show. We can't wait to see awesome. you in March when you come over to the UK. I am so and, um, pumped. You guys legitimately, I have, you have no idea how excited I am. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, awesome. We can't wait to see you. We can't wait to see everything awesome. on uh, Go and Postal and YouTube as well. Yeah. Thanks, guys.